Hey people, welcome back for another episode of the Jagged Edge. This is Ian here along with Chris. Jagged Edge. What's up, buddy? <laughs> That, that's if that's your sales pitch voice from now on. Keep that. Keep Jack. keep 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 that locked, please. Keep it going. <laughs> Hope everybody is doing good, having a good weekend, or wherever you're at. Uh, we uh, for once, uh, man, it's, we almost did a whole month of movie reviews, but we've only got uh, one release we're doing for this week. Uh, just our show here. Um, uh, we're hey. still still waiting a bit for a couple other things to come out in the can, but that of course does not stop the endless march we've got with. Netflix, uh, which is just absolutely on fire uh, still. And, uh, news for a lot of the other films that we've been speaking about right here, and also some of the upcoming uh, uh, gaming news we've got here. But uh, more, moreover, uh, it, we were talking about this a little bit beforehand. It's the Netflix stuff that's blowing me away. You know, it's uh, I don't want to say that Comic Con ignited it per se, but they've just they've really been on a roll here. Uh, I thought they had one of the better showings. Uh, San Diego Comic Con, and now we're starting to see some more of the fruits of what they got planned. Netflix Comic Con, <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, Netflix is definitely in the news this week. All kinds of stuff going on for it. Um, yeah, let's start. Let's start from a week ago. Uh, this is my bad. We were going to have a review off for it. My bad. We're not going to have one, but that's all right because we, we only got half a season, so not not so much a review. But yeah, Voltron season three came out last weekend. Um, you have not watched it yet. No, I'm still plowing plow my way through two right now. I plan to be plan to be done uh, as of this week and caught up, especially with this whole half a season deal. Yeah, yeah, only only seven episodes. Uh, I was going to do a review of the whole season, and actually, I'm kind of glad that I just didn't have the time to do it um, because we only got half a season. Uh, I I was I didn't know that I honestly didn't even look at the episodes. It said season three play. I played. I went and it got to the middle. What I thought was the middle of the season. And I'm like, all right, this is getting good. And I won't spoil too much because maybe other people haven't seen it either, and you haven't seen it either. But they start getting into the history of Voltron, the beginning of Voltron, and they start telling that story, and then it stops. See, that baffles me now. Now, this is the part I don't think is a spoiler, and I'm 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 really curious. I want to hear. Ha- has there been word that this third season, as partial as it seems, that this is it for Voltron and Netflix? I mean, is this the end? No, 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 no. They're gonna. So yeah. So I looked into this, and they're gonna they're gonna come out with season four. Actually, in just a couple months, in October, you're gonna get six more episodes of season four. You, they can call it four, five, and six. Right. That's the other half of season three. All right. Everybody knows it. Uh, in fact, uh, Netflix is committed to 78 episodes in all right now for Voltron. So we're going to get tons of Voltron, but by the time they get through those 78 episodes, it's going to be 15 years from now, and they're going to be in like season 30, and they're going to be <laughs> three episode season. This, th- this, this bothers me. Uh, it, look, and it, although it was more of a mercy than anything that we only got four episodes of Castlevania, I, I was shocked to see that we only got four episodes of that. And everyone's like, well, not everyone, but a lot of people are like, well, it's just a teaser. You get a teaser, you know. <laughs> think. It's like, well, they, I hope they learned a lot, uh, which I don't think they did because all the anime fans loved it. They ate it up like freaking Pac-Man on Pac-Man pellets or whatever. Like, and it was, I'm just like, everyone's eating that garbage, and I'm just like, what are you? Are we tasting the same thing? <laughs> don't eat that. Yeah, don't, 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 eat, and don't encourage them. <laughs> this was crap. Now that being said, the, the quality for Voltron continued, and that's some that's something I worry about, especially after seeing Castlevania. Yeah, and I was like, oh my god, are they here? We go, here we go. This is the this is the point where they start just getting lazy, and the production starts getting bad. And while there were a couple times during season three, I'm like, you know what, this just doesn't seem to be as high quality as the other two seasons were, and I right. didn't actually go back and analyze that. Um, it's still fine. It's still really good. The story is good. It's compelling. Um, my favorite part is how they're at least right now handling the whole situation with Shiro. And, uh, you know, I, one of the things I told you is that there is a shakeup with the Paladins and the lineup. And I'm mm-hmm. not going to say anything more about that. Um, but you know, it, it, it's fine. I, yes, I was surprised there was only seven episodes because they didn't even look. And season one had 11 episodes, and season two had 13 episodes, which was also like, oh my god, people love this so much, they're putting more in. And then season three had seven. 
So they can go ahead and call season the next half season four. I'm going to call it season three, the second half. <laughs> second coming. Yeah. Right. Because it is. And it's only two yeah. months away. It annoys the crap out of me that they do this. I, I do not like this. I mean, I, I get it. It's their platform. They make their money by going month to month. But I, if this is a trend of things to come, if, if season three of Daredevil split in half, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> and if there's one thing that if people do, if they don't like the quality of what you're doing, they will still go to the internet to watch it, but they're going to watch it somewhere else. Oh, and yeah. they're going to watch it for free. <laughs> and Netflix has to be careful about that because it's not people people don't mind paying Netflix for stuff because they appreciate the quality and the kind of programming they come out with. Exactly. And but if they're going to start pulling this crap, then they're going to start losing subs, but people are still going to find a way to watch their favorite shows. Oh, they will. They, they will. I mean, whether whether that's through some kind of backdoor, or even if it's direct download, or if it's it's a torrent, you're not one way. S- somehow, someone's going to get it. It'll be seen. Right. So this is this is dumb. Especially if the gap was only two months. If the gap, was, why two months? Why? <laughs> I mean, do they do? I, I haven't looked at it. Maybe I should analyze a little bit more. Do they have a drop in sales between you know from the summer into the fall? Is that then just start uh, start advertising for the show to come out in the fall? I would have gladly waited until October. Sure, you know it's not, and it's not like they don't have Stranger Things two coming out in October either. So I mean, that's you know the subscriptions are going to jump because of that. I don't know. I'm just, I'm annoyed by that. Um, that being said, the quality of the season itself, the half of it. See, that's the thing. Because I, I, I think that drops the quality. I think right. the fact that it's only seven episodes drops the quality. And I'm not getting as much as I was. And if I wanted to drop after this, I didn't get as much as what I paid for last year. And, you know, it. so, yeah, I'm, I'm a little, you know, I'm probably a little less upset than I sound right now. Because I just, I, I, I'm, more ups, I'm more upset of the fact that I'm worried that this is a trend that we're going to start seeing from Netflix. Right. Um, but as for the episodes themselves, it was good. The story is as good as it has been. Uh, it, it's more of an enigma to me because I'm not an anime fan um, that that this show is keeping my interest. But at the same time, it does reassure me that it is, in fact, the lack of quality in most anime that turns me off. And right. if it's they're giving me good stories and good animation and, uh, and the such, then I will watch. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I mean, hey, you know, I know there was some initial, uh, when this first started, I was kind of, because I looked at this, at least stylistically, and I'm like, can I really, can I, can I, can I call this an anime? And and technically I can, you know, uh, I I think production value is something really to be pointed at here. And and more, moreover, thank God, the use of CG is done well here. Uh, right, this, it's almost flawless. It, it is. This, this this is an area where I've seen so many shows fall on their face lately. Uh, in in uh, one of the prolific uh, anime, Berserk, uh, CG is really really awkward. You know, I, I kind of I, I dropped off with Berserk uh, when the original Golden Age arc ended, and we it, it got crazy after Eclipse. So I'm not following the new series, but from um, what they did do in the movies uh, to what they're doing now, and like uh, the footage they release, it's really awkward. Uh, and, and most of the time, it's 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 clunky. Uh, it doesn't fit. It, it's obtrusive. Uh, it runs it runs countercurrent to the style, and it just uh, it, it's awkward. So it, I understand uh, why it's it's something that allows for some greater freedom in scenes, some different adjustment you wouldn't be able to <laughs> do otherwise, you know, on a, on a, on a two D plane. But uh, if anyone can take lessons from Voltron, please please do because this this is pretty sharp. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, though. Uh, just to talk about the cultural difference and a, a cultural dominance on this. And, yeah, this is an outsider looking in, but I got a feeling that most of the Asian culture, which creates the vast majority of, uh, the, of anime, is not going to take any lessons from these American people making it. No. They're, they're not going to like that too much. And, and vice versa, if it was the other way around. It, it is the other way around when it comes to, like, cars, for example. Um, there, there's been... For decades, vehicles that have been made in Japan or from Japanese companies that have made superior cars. But and I, I am guilty of this myself. Americans are like, no, no, no. I need my Chevy. I need my <laughs> Ford. 
even though these vehicles aren't as good. Uh, so, you know, it, you, you see examples of that, and I have a feeling that's how it's going to go. Um, but, hey, that's fine. You know, it, a, a lot of people like the shit that a lot of anime is. <laughs> so, and I'm not one of them, and I, I will <laughs> rail against it. Um, I have no problem railing against it. But when I find something I like and something that's of quality, I will say it. Um, but most of this stuff is just over dramatic, hit, hitting the notes dribble. <laughs> It's a, you know, the the whole, and I'm interested too about the whole web TV model as opposed to a, a, a traditional series as far as how it runs in its length. And most of the time, it's, it's important to point out too, uh, an anime you'll get about 26 episodes, it'll be a single season, maybe two seasons, you might go into 50. Uh, for Shonen series like One Piece and, and Naruto and stuff, they'll go on forever. I mean, One Piece still isn't over. Uh, Naruto's in different iterations at this point, even though the main series ended. That, that, those were 200, 300, 500 episodes. Yeah, they, you name Thank it. God, that's not real, right? 500 episodes? Uh, it's real. It's, <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose when the animation is as good as a flip book. <laughs> this guy. You, you can do that. <laughs> I, 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 I'd be careful. There's some pretty awesome animation in some pieces. I, I can't say I like the style, but I can't, I can't knock the choreography and the way I think a lot of these scenes flow, they're done pretty well. Um, actually, it's just, I, it just feels so much, so much anime just feels like fast food. <laughs> I got to get my fix. So you, you digest through your ears and your eyes garbage. So you have, so you have to, I think be kind of scrupulous and look carefully at which series you get into. I'm like that. Uh, you know, I, I'd say I'm a fan, but there's, very little in recent years that I've actually watched. I mean, a lot of what's come out is kind of slice of life uh, genre, or like shorter series or just little snapshot vignette stuff. I'm really, I'm really not into that. Or a lot of popular series have been adapted into live actions. In fact, you're gonna, you're gonna keep seeing these come out in Netflix. Uh, there's a, uh, in fact, there's another Death Note uh, adaptation coming out. It's, it's not an animation. It's a live action. Uh, that's going to be yeah, on Netflix yeah. as well, and 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 a lot of others. So that's that's been happening a ton. But isn't James Cameron doing that? I believe so. Yeah, we're going to talk about him later. We have we have some awesome news about that. That's funny. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I, that's the other thing is that you know Netflix is known for hey, here's our season. Blah, there it is. Mm-hmm. And if you want to watch one, you can watch one. If you want to watch five, you can watch. If you want to just binge this whole thing you can and they can call the six more episodes season four all they want that's season three and a you know in a half that's the other half of season three and you know because they're splitting this up now and they're only giving you seven and now you get the other six and they're not coming out at the same time and i really don't like that i liked that model like, hey, if you know, if I want to watch this all now, I can. Or if I want to watch, you know, just some of this now. And, and to, to leave it on a cliffhanger, which is something that they basically have almost said that they won't do. And what their model has said they won't do. Look, this is the season. This is the story. And if the whole season ended on a cliffhanger, that's one thing. But they cut off season season three right in the middle. Yeah. Do you, you get what I'm saying? Which sucks. I mean, it's... It's I'm not happy, of, Netflix. It's sort of a betrayal in a way. Like, like, I was and I was wondering if and when you do that, there's normally a some kind of plot reason, or there's some kind of jump, or, or something that right. correlates directly into what's actually happening in the show. But not here. Right, right. No, they just cut the season in half, and they're calling it season three and season four. This is whatever. Um, you know, I, I'm not happy. I'm not <laughs> happy with you. Uh, you're, you're being shitty and they we got some really bad news coming up for them here soon that we're going to talk about but first let's let's turn the page for a moment uh talk about something great uh defenders oh yeah coming out next week next friday less than a week away um been waiting on this one for a long time the culmination of everything they did with their netflix shows their netflix marvel shows uh we're gonna get it now they've now to their credit they said this was a mini series is eight episodes. Um, they've always said that about it. It's not even like a full. It's not even like Daredevil season one or Daredevil season two. This is just the Defenders. They haven't <laughs> even definitively said we will get a Defender season two 
or the next miniseries. This, Interesting. They're, they're putting this together, and if it does well, I'm sure we'll get another one. But um, you know, they haven't. Uh, you know, it, we're we're getting it next week. Finally, love it, love it. You know, and the, 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 this is what all these series have been been leading to. Um, of course, you know, Luke Cage, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, um, Iron Fist. Um, especially now we've got them. Uh, I'm going to call this <laughs> Avengers Mini. Almost is what what this feels like. So yeah, it does. It does feel like that. It's almost a shame that it feels like that, but that's because they are very much following the same model. Uh, so it can't help. You can't help but to compare it. But it it is a very different. Well, it's it's the same world MCU, although they they barely touch. Uh, but it is the same world, and so you know it is. But it is the same formula to an extent, and it's going to be fun. I'm going to have a lot of fun with these characters uh, getting together and seeing how they interact. I'm I, just like Jessica Jones season one. I'm going to try to figure out: Does she even have superpowers? <laughs> is she even super strong? I, they, they're all over the place with that. But I'm looking forward to Luke Cage and uh, Iron Fist meeting. And uh, looking, always looking forward to more Daredevil. That, of that's just fun. I think we're going to see the Punisher in this. Um, we're going to get Elektra back, and maybe we're going to find out if this leads to vampires, which then leads to Blade. Yeah! Which would be awesome, but we'll see. There's nothing confirmed on that. We can hope. I would love it. <laughs> I'd take it all back, Netflix. I'd let you do three seasons. <laughs> I'd let you do three episode seasons of Voltron all you want. Give me Blade. <laughs> Oh man, um, and and, and I don't know if I I, I missed this uh, about the uh, you're saying the the misreported uh, Luke Cage. Oh yeah, I screwed that oh. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I screwed that up. Um, apparently, the Luke Cage season two is in production. We saw nothing at Comic Con for this though. No, <laughs> nothing. That I I didn't see any reports on anything for Luke Cage season two. And so even here in the last couple of weeks, I commented about, uh, hey, where is it? <laughs> do, do we have it? Right. Even, even Iron Fist is getting a season two, and a lot of people weren't so thrilled about that. It's like, where's Luke Cage season two? That that whole thing was great. Have you watched it all yet? For, I, Iron Fist or Luke Cage? Luke Cage. No, not Luke Cage. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it, I would have to say it's my second favorite. Awesome. Um, yeah, behind Daredevil. That's all right, because Jessica, jo- Jessica Jones was fun, but... Really, her superpowers are all over the place. Can't really tell what the hell she's got going on. And I, I don't know. I think Iron Fist gets a bad rap. Um, I, I enjoyed Iron Fist. The first uh, first half of that season wasn't so great. Uh, like we talked about, those uh, those main characters could not, you know, which were basically the only characters we saw, could not really carry that by themselves. But once that once that season got going, it got really good. Yeah, part of me wonders if, if the whole Iron Fist thing is just due to SJW uh, rage. I mean... Part of me thinks it is the uh, about the whole. Well, you know this, uh, the issues about the the rich kid, oh, yeah, you know, coming back in town and you know him magically having the answers of being. You know, put all put all that aside, you know, because it, um, I I, th- I really think it's unfair to view Iron F- or review Iron Fist in that light. Rather, I mean, he there's so many things that they borrowed directly from Comic Continuum about. Uh, with this character, and and I really don't think they're breaking bounds uh, uh, as as a result. Uh, in fact, it, you know, it's a slow starter, as we said way back. But it's I, I enjoyed it, frankly. So. Yeah, no, I did too. I, I I will agree with some of the complaints that there wasn't as much action as there should have been, especially because when it comes to doing uh, kung fu action, it's a it's about as low budget as it gets. Um, you know, he's not doing a whole lot of superpowers and stuff like that. You know, he's got a glowy fist, and maybe he got some people attached to some strings for, you know, super high intense punches and kicks and stuff. But, um, yeah, it, it did seem like it did lack in some action. But overall, I, I did enjoy the season. I thought uh, once it got going, it really told a good story. Um, and, and like we said back then, that people, when people were originally reporting it, they'd only seen, I think, the first six or seven episodes. And it really doesn't pick up until after that. No. Um, so yeah, I'm you know I, I'm looking forward to seeing them in Defenders and seeing what they do with season two. See if they can uh, if they can pull that one back. Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna segue. <laughs> Hit it. Speaking of pulling things back, nah, <laughs> yeah, back back to bad news for Netflix. Oh, Disney. Man. Di- yeah, Disney. They're they're saying see ya, bitches. <laughs> Disney is pulling all of their movies off of Netflix. Uh, they'll all be deal. gone. 
Yep, yeah, by 2019, all Disney and Pixar movies will be off of there, uh, which has become a home for them. Uh, I think we talked about this uh, months ago. Um, Disney was looking to get into the streaming game and said, hey, so let's just use Netflix. And that's you know that was pretty smart, I thought. Yeah. And um, so they've been doing that, and now they're like, you know what? No, we're gonna we're gonna do our own streaming. This is we're gonna do this now. Um, so they're coming out with their their own streaming platform for their products. Um, coming out starting 2019. They're also doing something for ESPN, but we don't talk sports here. So, um, yeah. So the Marvel shows will continue on Netflix uh, at least for the foreseeable future. None yep. they specifically said that. Um, see the like I said, new uh, new platform will be home for Disney movies, including and this is what I thought was interesting, including upcoming exclusive movies and shows only on that streaming uh, that Disney streaming network. Um, but yeah, starting next year, you get Toy Story four, Frozen two coming out, and those will end up on their exclusively on their streaming network. Um, but uh, yeah, Netflix is. Uh, in negotiations with Disney to try to salvage some of this relationship and keep the movie, uh, the Marvel movies, and um, and what are, what are the others, the Star Wars movies, to which I think they mm. they've only got Clone Wars and Rogue One, um, so they you know, they don't have a lot of them on there, but they want to keep those there uh, on Netflix, and there's nothing definitive on that yet, but right now we are to assume that those will be pulled as well. Um, that's pretty huge. Yeah, I was uh, shocked. You know, it makes me think about the the the, the static, the cross traffic you already have with streaming services. You, you know, there's there's a part of me that that says in in this market, yeah, you know, which is which is so heavily driven by by your uh, by your consumer base, uh, by what you already have in place. I mean, they're okay. There's no doubt. You know, Disney Disney rather is a household household name. They've established so many different films, both in animation, uh, 2D animation, classics, Lion King, etc. And, of course, 3D Pixar, who can forget Toy Story and everything. But uh, I think, to me, that poses a challenge. Uh, you're, 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 you're placing a service directly countercurrent to Netflix, uh, which is the de facto... Well, and, and Hulu, and Amazon. And who, yeah, it, it's, it, it's tough. Like, I get, I get this for, like, sports. And things like that, because you you have you know ESPN and there's radio and there, there's other areas. It's it's a whole it's an entirely different base you're catering to. But I really think there's a danger of, of having a little too much traffic here, and I I think Disney's going to be walking into something rough. He's and we don't again we don't talk about sports here, but there's something to be said. There's there's a whole topic to be said for ESPN doing streaming because cable survives now basically off of its sports package. Um, everything else is easily obtainable online or through these streaming uh, outlets. Um, so that's that's interesting in itself. And as as a uh, as a someone who's interested just in how cables doing or not doing, that's very interesting. But that's not what we, we don't generally talk about sports here. In fact, I don't think we ever do, uh, minus um, people swimming against sharks. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so. Which wasn't really no anyway. <laughs> at all. Um, th- this is shocking to me. I I don't know how I totally feel about this. I don't know how how I don't think I've come up with a, an assessment on this yet. Although I'm definitely leaning towards the opinion of this doesn't go well for any parties. No, because I don't. I don't know. I guess I I didn't hear much about what Disney has planned. I mean, if this is Disney saying we're going to put our movies here and no one's going to profit off of them but us, that I don't think that's going to do very well for them. Because you know, let's let's talk about this for a second. So, what are what are the big things to worry about here? For me, it's the Marvel movies and and it's the Star Wars movies. I really enjoy right. the fact, like right now, as as I've been doing cardio on. Um, uh, you know, yeah. Well, just, we'll just put it as that. As I'm doing cardio, I've I've actually got Netflix on there. I don't have cable in that room. Uh, I've been watching Rogue One. Hey. Uh, and and before that, I was watching uh, Civil War. There you so, go. You know, yeah, I'm watching things on Netflix. And before that, before that, I was watching Archer. I was getting caught up on the on the last season of Archer, which was awesome. Um, so you know, I'm watching Netflix, but I'm watching a lot of those. 
But that being said, if I really like those movies and I really have a heavy interest in watching them, I will buy them. And, and yeah. I think I think a lot of the Disney cartoon movies and uh, and Pixar movie fans are the same way. I'm watching them because they're there. I don't really get Netflix because of that, though. Right. No, I I agree. It's and I think it's important to draw a distinction between the whole uh, com- competitive base when it comes to the companies themselves about revenues, about margins, about service models, as opposed to consumers and how we view it. Hey, and I'm right there too. You know, I'd argue that having the more things we can have centralized, the the more traffic I argue that 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 business will get, and in the same hand, uh, the more convenient it is. That that that's awesome to be able to tune into a specific spot and be able to catch some of your stuff from Star Wars and be able to catch uh, the latest Pixar film or be able to catch uh, the latest episode of Daredevil or whatever else. That's awesome. I think the more these things separate in uh, other models, I mean, come on, you get a Netflix sub, and I, I think there's just a, there's, you're expecting so much to come with that. A lot of people, uh, I, I think, would have a make a difficult argument saying, "Well, let me go get another sub for this specific Disney service for this specific movie for this specific series." That, that's dedic- That's a lot of dedication there. Well, so that's what I guess that's what I'm wondering. So, I mean, is Disney just doing Netflix for their movies, or are they trying to? come up with something else i mean right you know they said there's going to be exclusive movies which i'm sure are going to be as great as those like bambi 2 and the the horrible shit show that that was with this animation that was right you know right down there with your basic anime and stuff like that is it going to be garbage like that are they going to come up with good uh kids programming because there's going to be an opening in fact yeah sesame street is on hbo now and there's there's a gap for basically free children programming um, PBS isn't running it too much anymore, and I think there's. I think they may try to uh, take advantage of that, but that's not me. And it, you know, I'm caring about the Marvel movies and the Star Wars stuff. Kind of, I would like them to continue on Netflix. If they go away, that's not going to make me cancel. But if they go away, that's also not going to make me go to Disney. Right. It's- so it, it's. I think it's a very different market they might be going after, or or not. Yeah, and that, that's that's the question, right? Uh, you just highlighted it. What would make you move or not move? Uh, you know, it, it's one thing to have an established base or be counting on maybe a certain number of subscribers to to reach that you'll already have in place. But expanding that is the next challenge. Netflix has been able to successfully utilize this model to continue to do that and I, and for uh, many reasons. Uh, first, the, the the quality of the content you're seeing, a lot of the Netflix originals, that's super refreshing. Uh, these days, right. you know, and that that's that is on par with things that uh, you'd see from uh, you know, instead of waiting for a high end movie or something to come out, you get in the form of of a series. So, in terms of sustainability, that's a real question. Uh, it's one thing to take your classics and put them in one place, but what's what's what is going to be the pull to get us there? Right. Well, and so the Marvel TV shows, the Netflix Marvel shows are going to stay. And that is in large part, I'm sure, if not entirely in part, because Netflix is flipping the bill to make those. Uh, but, you know, may, maybe Disney wants to branch out beyond children programming, which is basically what these movies are. The movies that they've definitively say, said are going to be gone are the cartoon movies and the Pixar movies. And those are child, childlike in nature. I mean, everybody loves them. I, I'm, I'm not a big fan. Up is awesome, but I don't really give a crap about the rest of them. Um, <laughs> so, you know, but what if they decide to expand on that? What What if um, What if the next uh, couple Marvel shows come out on Disney? Right. That's going to tick me off. Uh, it's bad enough I'm going to have to watch Freeform. <laughs> and I'm not even, I, and we haven't talked about it yet, but Hulu's even getting a Marvel show. Um, oh, what's it called? Oh, they're getting one based on kids that are they're kids of supervillains and stuff like that. Uh, but there's nothing that's saying that that's even part of the MCU. Just like there's really nothing definitively saying that the freeform shows are part of the MCU. Um, so you know, which is a branching out that I don't really like. No, to, to be quite honest with you, um, you know. So it, it does have me a little worried. I mean, and then we're talking. They're always talking about the next. Uh, the, the next Star Wars cartoon, which their Rebels is ending with season four, and there are plans, and it, there is pre-production for the next uh, Star Wars cartoon, and they're always talking about a live-action show. Um, 
man, what if those are going to be on this this Disney thing? Uh, you know, I don't think I'll do it. I think, uh, you know, hey, Netflix is on notice. Disney, you're not even out yet. You're already on notice, motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm going to steal your shows. Done deal. I'm going to, I'm not, you know, I, I have Netflix and I have Amazon Prime. Uh, not even for its shows or its movies, but because, damn, Amazon Prime is nice. I get my stuff sometimes the next day. Yeah, it's, I mean, between... <laughs> it's between, ridiculous. Yeah, between Amazon Prime and then, of course, uh, if you want to, if you want to expand that, I mean, the grounds there for you know in the Amazon Music. Uh, right. Into well, that's right. There's the whole music thing too. There's and I mean, hey, if you want to pick up movies, I mean, they they have there there is a, there is a streaming model there. So uh, it's sort of the gift that keeps on giving. But, right. Yeah. I, but I have no interest in, to watch Snow White. <laughs> Same. I don't. I don't want to watch Dumbo. <laughs> and I don't want to watch the series based off of Dumbo. I don't want to, you know, hey, I enjoyed DuckTales when I was a kid. Uh, and I know they're coming out with a, they're, they're redoing the series. Um, I don't care if season two is exclusively on Disney. I don't even care where season one is. I'm not going to watch it. I, you know, I'm not one of those people that say, it's not my DuckTales. No, but I'm, I'm not, you know, I just, I don't want to watch it. You know, I, I got Daredevil to watch, you know. Um, did you even know that they're coming out with new DuckTales? Yes, that I did yeah. know. Um, where did I find that out? I, I know there's there's a lot of talk about this at this past PAX that I went to PAX uh, PAX South. Uh, in fact, it was after that Ducktales. Um, what was it? That, that the, not the video games live. It was it was the it was the band that was doing the live theme. Duck Ducktales was the last game that was played, and there was a live speed run of that. You with, know, I heard that was like one of the best games to come out on Nintendo. But it was by it that was. Point, by that point, that Nintendo was like in its last year of life, and I think a lot of people just didn't play it, including myself. I missed it. I own that and uh, Darkwing Duck. I really like both. Yeah, I saw some of that. I was like, wow, okay, Disney's Batman ripoff. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, man. They, they took it. What was, what was the pilot's name from DuckTales, and he was on that show then? He was, uh, what? The pilot guy, the pilot duck. Pilot. It was, yeah, he was a pilot. He was. A, he, I think he was an idiot. And then he would. So he was. He was the pilot for Scrooge McDuck. Uh, but then he was oh. on. Uh, he was on Darkwing Duck. That yeah. Because see, I was about to say there was there was that tie that tied both together. Uh, and I, I know yeah. th- that was the guy. Uh, he had, he had the big chin, right? Yeah. Yeah. What was his Launchpad name? Launchpad McQuack. Launch. Launchpad. That's so dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is great, the launch pad. McQuack. Yeah, <laughs> McQuack, uh, McQuack or McDuck? Uh, it should it should be McQuack. I don't think I, I don't think I'm wrong. But. I think I think you're right. I think it's what that's. Uh, oh yeah, but I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, so that's you know that's the way it is. You know, here's the thing. Like for example, um, Spike Spike TV has has the mist. And which I think is over now at this point, and I, right. uh, I, I've been interested in that. I'd watched some of the episodes. Uh, I went, I went online and got them. Now I went to their website. I went to the website first, <laughs> and I'll watch it on their website if they got it and they had them. But if they didn't have them on there, I'd go to some other website. And, watch <laughs> and that's that's how I watch Rebels. <laughs> and that's um, that's how I watched most of. Uh, oh, what was that? That show, I don't even remember it anymore. That crazy, the, the show about the schizophrenic that wasn't really a schizophrenic, the X Men show. Oh, um, not not ha- I keep I keep wanting to say havoc. Um, no, not havoc. no. Xavier's. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, wow. You loved this show. I I didn't think it was all that great. You loved it though. I'm surprised. You I did. I did. I did. I I I dug it. Well, most I watched most of that online too. Um, Legion. You know, that's just in. Sometimes I watched it on their website. I watched it on FX's website, and sometimes I didn't. So, but I, you know, you're not going to stop me. <laughs> I can't be stopped. Till <laughs> <laughs> till the, the so, FBI. Yeah, comes. this is this is just dumb. I just I don't understand why Disney just doesn't keep their multi kajillion dollar deal with Netflix, which is what I'm sure they've got some kajillion zillion dollar deal with them to do this is i i get it's, i get so even if they're looking at like if they're looking small scale or they're looking large scale you know do it do a deal with netflix this is silly yeah yeah don't, yeah you don't need to be doing this because people people like most people will get one 
maybe two streaming channels. But in most of those second ones are people like us who just so happen to have Amazon Prime for other reasons. Right. So, you know, it, you know, the minority, just like the minority of gamers, don't get all the consoles. You always got that one kid's like, I got them all. <laughs> most of them, most of them don't. <laughs> you just can't, I, I can't justify it. As much as I do like Up, which is the last decent animation movie that they've made, in my opinion. We've never really talked about Disney. I don't know. No, even no, we haven't. Show. I don't think. I don't think we have. My my hatred for Disney is well renowned. See, I didn't know. I didn't know it was that deep. Wow. It, it was. I mean, they they've changed their ways, and, and for that, I I will watch it. But if they had not changed their ways, I still would not even be watching the, all this Marvel stuff. I was about to say. So so you're implying there's a time where you did enjoy Disney Disney content. There's a time when I didn't, and now there is currently a time that I do. I see. I see. Right. I but if they hadn't changed their ways, I wouldn't even watch Star Wars stuff. There you go. Yeah. So, um, but I still don't really give a crap about their animations. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't. Uh, uh, but but to put it in perspective, I have never watched from start to finish a classic Disney anime. No kid. See, here, here's the funny part. I, I got to pause there. You are the first person I've ever spoken to that called Disney Animation an anime. Well, it is an anime. I disagree. You know what I mean, though. You know what I, I mean. I'm with I'm, you. I'm sorry, I'm sir. with you. A, a, a Disney classic anime. <laughs> I get what you mean, but go on. You know what I, I, mean. I just never heard it referred never like that. I've watched it all the way through. Not, yeah. not a Bambi, not a Dumbo, not a Snow White, not a, uh, not a Cinderella, not a Pinocchio. Um... Not a one. Huh. Not even that robot one, which I really kind of thought was cool. Yeah, the, uh... Well, isn't it giant, sad I keep wanting to call that big O? Giant robot. I think it's giant robot or something yeah. like that. I'm with you. Uh, you know what? Now, wait, now some Pixar's I have. Some mm-hmm. Pixar ones I have. Wreck-It Ralph? Uh, no, no, actually I do want to see I do want to see that That was one. pretty cool. But, yeah, I don't cool. search these things out, though. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> but it did up. I love Up. That was great. Uh, that came out at a time within a year after uh, I had a family member pass away, and oh. so I actually rented that and took it took it over to them to watch it with them. And it was a great it was a great movie to watch at the time. Uh, so I love Up, and that is just a lot of fun. And it does stand out above most of their other things that they've that they've come out with too. Good stuff. You Good have stuff. seen Up, right? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. You. What do you think? What do you think of Up? You know. I I was worried. I was kind of like you. I didn't think that. Well, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm misquoting here. I, I I say like you, but I, let me pause. What kind of expectations did you come in up with? I don't know if mine were the same. Um, the expectations were pretty high because I actually had somebody who would not stop bugging me to watch it until I watched it. So they they told me, despite my my uh, frustration with Disney at the time, that I needed to watch it. Uh, so it was pretty high because going into it, I was told that I would love it, which is raising the bar pretty high at that time. So, no, oh. oh, fair enough. Yeah, I uh, I wasn't jaded coming into this. I thought it looked like something really, really heartwarming, uh, sort of like a not really like like a paradise lost, but but a whole jaded old man and someone who kind of comes and you know rouses him out of his state, and say, hey, get out of this malaise, you know, let's you know, go somewhere. I, I I I enjoyed it and the the whole. The whole concept of uh, a balloon salesman, like you know, filling a dream, it, it was fun. It, it, was, it was a fun ride. Yeah, yeah, no, so, I agree. I liked it. Um, but Netflix, get your shit straight. <laughs> you're, you're running into some trouble here. Uh, and I haven't been watching you nearly as much as I used to. I used to watch Netflix all the time. I used to, well, you know, I used to work 60, 70 hours a week. Uh, and one of my favorite things to do would be uh, Friday or Saturday nights just to relax on the couch. Curl up with uh, with Roar, curl up with the Kitty Cat, and just watch some Netflix. Um, I, I I did that for months on end. Uh, one night oh, during the weekend, um, that was a couple years ago. <laughs> I, I watch Netflix now for for shows and series that they have now, or the occasional exclusive movie, or the occasional movie that I really enjoy that comes out on it. Um, I will stick around for that. Uh, I keep the subscription around because, hey, sometimes I'm bored and maybe there's something on Netflix. Actually, I have to take that back, too. Uh, their stand-up comedy is getting fucking awesome. 
<laughs> I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but their stand-up stuff is getting to be pretty kick-ass. And so I'll watch some of that, too. I'll watch the, uh, the Chappelle stuff they had on there. Uh, the Louis C.K. stuff's always good. Love it. But it's always situational now. It's not, hey, let's watch, let's find something on Netflix and watch it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so better be careful. You're on notice. <laughs> Disney, you're on notice, too, but just because you're dumb. <laughs> all right. So that's all of our Netflix stuff. Uh, images for Cable came out. I'm not even a segue. Just bleh, Yeah. Is. Images for Cable came out. Uh, Josh Brolin as Cable. Everybody was worried. What would you think? Cool. You know, like, at the, the whole... the the general aesthetic, just from what we've seen, is that shot or two so far. I, I think I want to say that was in the previous week as well. Uh, um, some of these, some of these have leaked out. Uh, looks cool. You know, I the last thing I expected was the same. You know, yellow-eyed, five hundred pound strapping guy from the the comics to come running out. Uh, but he's he's got the whole spooky kind of cyborg theme. Which is which is real cool. It's 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 cable. I look at it and I'm not I'm not questioning in my mind who. Which character is this? Uh, cool. I I like it. I agree. Uh, it is as best of a life, uh, real life uh, uh, adaptation of Cable as I think we would get. Um, if I would say one thing that I definitely would have changed, that hair's off. Mm-hmm. The hair is off. It's not quite what it should be. But you know, sometimes in a in a picture, it doesn't look the same like it would in motion. Exactly. So, um, but this is really cool. Uh, Josh Brolin is huge. Whenever I see him huge like this, it just reminds me of uh, it reminds me of Goonies, and him working out in Goonies. He was always working out in Goonies, but he was never big like this. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's there he is. Uh, a couple decades of working out. There he is. he's a monster now. Uh, from what I can tell, they've got. Uh, I'm looking at a picture right now. Are you looking at one right now? Yeah, I am. Um, the, the the whole uh, what's it called the the cyber virus or whatever it looks like for the most part they're they're getting this correct. It looks a little cheese uh, on the arm, right? What do you think? It does look a little cheese, doesn't it? A little, but uh, then again, the it, the whole the whole theme the whole theme always carried that a little bit. I, I'm pretty I'm pretty lenient on this one. Yeah, no, and, and I mean that's something that they might totally fix in post production with with effects. So, and that right. there's a million things they can do with that. But I'm sorry, I'm looking at this picture right now. He's holding a gun, and you can see his arm. How is that shirt sleeve not completely ripped up? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get that over that arm. <laughs> that was, um, you know, even as going back as far as um, Marvel v Capcom too. Like, you know, whenever Cable showed up, he he always had a part of his outfit that was sort of scaled around that because there were forces where he couldn't keep control you know that virus where he would wig out and just mutate out of control for a moment where he could rein it back in no yeah. this is you're more of the x-men guy here but i don't know if you're gonna know this i really don't follow the x-men um cable is one of my favorites uh for sure he's definitely up there in the top three but what happens to him i have seen parts of comics and covers in comics where he has no cyber virus and then where the the virus has taken over much more of his body. Yeah. Do you know anything behind that? Uh, I knew a little bit about what, uh, at least when he when he first got it, like you know when he when he first sanctioned it. As far as far as what what happened to him, uh, I can't. In, in those particular instances, do you know why that was that way? And was that canon? Was that was that Marvel six one six stuff? About 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 his level of control over the virus? No, no, no. About him being more consumed by it or not consumed by it at all. Because there, there's definitely so there's definitely some runs where he has no cyber virus. Right. Um, as far as I've looked, the the runs with him being consumed by it were not in mainline six one six cable. Cable was always one that was pretty in control, uh, both of his faculties and of. Uh, whatever type of mission he's maneuvering, you know. But he, while he he was always billed as a really powerful psyker uh, that had you know powerful telekinesis and everything like that, he usually would come in on the crazy time traveling trips. Yeah, you know? you know, I was 
I was reading something about that recently. Dude is insanely powerful. Yes, he is. Most he of is. It is consumed by the fact that he has this sickness, and it, and it has to. Most of his powers have to go into keeping it in control. Yep, and and, and that, that's 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 why I think um, you know cables usually build as you know the the you know ba totally gun toting and everything, and almost kind of like an amped up Punisher when he's not really like he's really strong. It's just he's sort of diverting his power to you know. Uh, keep himself under wraps, uh, essentially. But I think that's what always gave him that air, that persona of control. Um, and in that sense, he never, at least just from my my short time reading, came out across as like a, a berserker or this guy who just you know is always you know one step away from going nuts. So, so you, so you don't know is the short answer to that. Well, I told you what I do know. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> Well, anyways, it looks good. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. It gets my thumbs up right now. I mean, this is obviously the big thing. This was a main topic for a long time. Who's going to play Cable? What's he going to look like? Uh, looks uh, looks okay. Looks good. Um, arm looks a little cheese, but they can fix that. Yeah. Um, that hair's a little off, but honestly, uh, it's as good as I think we ever would have gotten from anyone. I agree. Uh, so, the funny story uh, about Josh Brolin, uh, who's also playing Thanos. This guy is owning... Yeah, he's on it. He's, he's just, Jesus, he's just everything with comic book movies right now. Uh, he was reportedly asked by James Cameron to take a role. It was not uh, uh, not identified what the role was, but to take a role in the upcoming Avatar, Avatar sequels. They're going to make 20 of them. Good uh, lord! No, no, every, no, no. every no, no, they're not. No, they're not making four. Don't don't do that. But they're still making four. Yeah, it's still a lot. It's still, one's too many. But um, all right, we'll talk about that in a second. But so reportedly, James Cameron had asked him to play a role in these, and Josh said uh, no. Um, to which pissed James Cameron off, apparently. So he was very upset that someone had actually turned him down. Which that hey. It's not specified as to the reason why, but you know he's obviously very busy right now. Uh, his, his slate is full currently with Avengers and with Deadpool. I think Deadpool's actually done shooting, but Avengers is still shooting or just finished. Mm-hmm. But they're going right into Avengers uh, four. Um, not to mention whatever appearances he's going to make besides that, and I think he's actually going to be doing other stuff. So maybe he's just busy. It doesn't specify why he said no, but he said no, and uh, that gave Dean Cameras the poo-poo face. <laughs> and upset about it, and um, so jo- Josh Rowland had this to say. Let's see. No, I'm going to try to read something again. So hopefully, I do this better than last time. <laughs> uh, let's see. He Jane, Josh. <laughs> Josh Rowland said. Uh, if I don't want to do Avengers, I'm not, or Avengers, see, there we go. <laughs> Shut up. If go I don't keep want going. To, <laughs> if I don't want to do Avatar, um, I'm not going to do Avatar. Now I lost the quote here. Um, let's see. Where is it? Okay. James Cram, uh, all right, you just do it. <laughs> Shut up. You're, you're, derp, derp, derp. It's this the link here, right? I actually quoted it in the notes. It's the okay. Josh, Josh Cameron, uh, James Cameron was really angry to be turned down. Josh Brolin had this to say about it: "If I don't want to do Avatar, I'm not going to do Avatar." James Cameron, effing calling me this name and that name, whatever. If James Cameron came to me and said, "Hey, man, why'd you say that?" I'd go because it happened. That's right. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I just, I just thought that was a great quote. You know, a lot of, I, so a lot of the stuff I guess kept under wraps. But uh, Josh Brolin, he's he's like whatever, bitches. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm really starting to like this guy. Yeah, you know, outside of the roles that he's playing, I'm really starting to like this guy because he look the the, the whole thing is that Goonies was supposed to launch his career and it didn't. Right, and for decades he was having a real hard time, problems with drugs, couldn't really get any gigs for acting. But now he's super popular. Yeah, he's doing a lot of good stuff. And, um, you know, it's like, maybe he's just busy. I'm sure he didn't mean to be a prick if he didn't. But, you know, if he didn't like the role, if he didn't have time for the role, you know, hey, he's not going to make room for you. Now, that being said, let's talk about the topic at hand. Do we give a crap about Avatar anymore? <sighs> Look. That, Do we that, want that, a sequel? 
That's one of the last things I'm hanging my hat on. Like, I, look, at the end of the original Avatar, I just assumed, I sort of assumed there would be. Um, at least yeah, one. That was eight years ago. But the question, it's a question of relevance now, right? It's been right. so long since we've seen that. I mean, we're going to basically be at a decade or more the next this time that comes Star out. Wars. Yeah. So, hey, I'd go see it. Am I, am I pining for it? No. I'll go see it if we're still doing this because that means I have to review it. <laughs> exactly. I really don't care besides that. I really don't. Avatar was a great movie. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Um, I don't care. I just, I just don't care. Yeah. And now they're saying the villain. I forget the, the guy's name who was the villain who everyone thought should have played Cable. You know who I'm talking about? No. The, the villain in Avatar? The general guy? Oh, him. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Everybody said he's the guy that should be pl- playing Cable. Um, he's going to be, and it was announced that he's going to be the villain in the next four sequels. Uh, the, uh, what? Right. Which <sighs> I could have sworn he had a couple arrows in him at the end of the first one. Um, I don't, but, you know, so how is he still alive? And how is he going to survive the next four, the next four movies? And is he going to end up becoming a blue alien thing too? And this, it just, it all sounds very dumb. Well, I mean, last time I saw him, he was doing a pretty good job of dying, so. Yeah, so, I just don't care. I just, and it's not even, I I enjoyed Avatar, I just don't care. You know, and I think part of it is, I think it's got kind of the same syndrome as the Lord of the Ring movies, where it's like, that was fantastic, that was awesome, that was a great experience, I'm glad I saw it. Oh, you're coming out with three more? That was also exhausting. Yeah. (laughs) And Avatar is the same way. Avatar was exhausting. Yeah, it's like, don't cool and all, but don't lambast us. I mean, I I never saw any of that. No, that's true. I saw the first Hobbit movie in theaters. I saw the last two on DVD. And, I mean, considering my fantasy uh, nerd roots when I was a teenager, um, the fact that I didn't see those in the theater was almost a crime. But it's, <laughs> it's so much. It's so much. It is. It and is. Avatar was exhausting. And <laughs> This is, oh, I don't. I don't care. I, <laughs> all right, let me go watch a Netflix Marvel show. <laughs> let me be happy. Oh man! And I'm not even. You know, I, I'm. A, I'm a smoker, but I'm barely a smoker now. I smoke like four or five cigarettes uh, a day now. Um, You've which, weaned off. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, yeah. You, t- you told me a little bit yeah, about I that, which was basically a pack and a half a day. Huge change. Huge change yeah. when I first met you. So I would go see these Lord of the Ring movies, and I'd halfway through, I'm like, oh, come on, I want a cigarette. <laughs> Which actually, the opening night for the Two Towers, it actually broke down halfway through, and half the audience, including myself, went out and had a cigarette, and then came back in and watched the rest of the movie. <laughs> so, but, uh, it's, yeah, these freaking three-hour-plus movies, come on. I, you know, I loved the fact that the Dark Tower was 90 minutes. Right. Right. They don't all have to be this. It's something that Marvel... Thank God Thor Ragnarok is going to be the shortest uh, Marvel movie to date. I think it's only going to be 100 minutes, right around there. They're all like two to two and a half hours, and it's it's a bit much. Yeah, there's we're, we're leaning so hard on that side of telling the epic these days that, that you sort of over-epic the epic, where you, you, know, you, you just realize, hey, you can be epic without totally killing time. One of the right. some of the, some of the best stories you said are are told in a decent frame of time without I, I think taking uh, too much and, and reading too much into itself. So, which is kind of ironic because Dark Tower needed another twenty minutes or so. It did. Uh, but, That's the best part. <laughs> but it's still for for me who knew nothing about the books. I enjoyed the story for what it was. And so yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm looking at Avatar. And it's like this was great, but this was this also kind of felt like work. Yeah. I yeah. Think, and I'm just not invested in your blue aliens anymore. I'm just not. <laughs> so that's, yeah, who, who cares? Go, go, go Avatar, I guess. What we do care about, though, there's some more Last Jedi info. Last Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> this was from... Uh, Good uh, stuff for Last Jedi news. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, you, you, you posted a note here. There was a piece from uh, Entertainment Weekly. Yeah, uh, wanted to wanted to some more details uh, about the character DJ. This is played by Benico del Toro from the Last Jedi, saying that right. he is not a Sith Lord uh, or character from Rebels, but he is a codebreaker or hacker and works only for the highest bidder. 
yeah, I'm kind of bummed about this. Uh, I was really, I really liked my dream that it was the character from Rebels, um, who who was either some kind of neutral Jedi or or a Sith of some sort. Um, I guess I'll be fine with it. They they've earned um, they've earned me to watch it no matter what, and I will go in there accepting what they put in if it's good. But you know that was the whole thing. A lot of people were having fun just kind of guessing on who this DJ guy was, and he looks a lot like Ezra forty years later. Hmm. Um, and it really could have fit that role. But okay, so he's he's a smuggler, he, it kind of. You know, he well, I guess smuggler is not as good, as good of a term as a bounty hunter. He sounds a lot more like a bounty hunter. Uh, you know, he he works for the highest bidder, which is basically what a bounty hunter does, except for he hacks stuff, which is interesting because we've never really seen much of hacking in in Star Wars. Not not a lot. You see droids do it all the time. Oh yeah. Um, but people, you don't really see a heck of a lot for this. So, all right, fine. But you you kind of pissed in my punch bowl a little bit too. They're yeah. openly saying he's not a character from Rebels. He's not a Sith. I guess they're not saying he's not a Jedi. He's not a Jedi. You've seen the pictures of this guy. <laughs> no, he's not. But so, all right, whatever, whatever. Um, what do you think of this? Yeah, you know, the last time, to my memory, that we had a Star Wars sort of side character that that, that we can't really label as a hardcore antagonist or hardcore hero character in a way, or a Jedi, or said there's someone in the main line that were, you know. The I think I think to the mercenary pool, and of course my mind goes to Boba Fett and 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 Jenga Fett. You know he he always fascinated me because he was a really interesting character. Actually, uh, he oh boy, uh, uh, well, well I'm going stay stay with me here. I'm with you. I'm trying. I'm with you still. I thought and I thought he was until till we got to Return of the Jedi, and then that was it. Ice. Okay, so I was going to ask you where you stood with Boba Fett. Uh, there's generally two camps. People thought he was the shit, and then people just thought he was shit. Yeah. <laughs> I led towards Camp 2 after watching through Star Wars. Now, here's the thing. When he was introduced, as I said, I'm like, okay, this is, this is a cool character. Where's he going to go? What's going to happen with this? It's like they're building lines, getting a lot of screen time, seeing this guy a lot, and then that's it. And I'm like, you oh. know... You know, it's okay. I'm not invested. Never mind. Uh, no, it's funny because I'm in one camp and then my brother was in the other. That's funny. Boba but, Fett was for years his favorite character. <laughs> I think Boba Fett is one of the shittiest characters ever come out of Star Wars. Uh, he's horrible. He's and he's done nothing. And, and he, he's a fool. And here's 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 the thing. You know. I, I I am glad to hear about a, a character that's having some more, um, a little bit more backstory and origin built up than a mercenary for one. I, like you said, mercenary in a sense, you know, instead of being you know going to hunt down someone with a gun, that's someone who you know uses his his code skills and and all that. Right, so right. yeah, he's made, I mean they're they're cut of the same cloth, but they're not the same thing. Cool. Yeah. Cool twist. Cool twist. I want to see what they do with that. I think. That allows you to give a character screen time without uh, necessarily having to invest them in like combat situations with like main characters and, and everything else. He he can. This is a character that can sort of play the role and then remain in the shadows. I'm down with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I was really hoping he was going to be Ezra, though. Mm-hmm. I really thought that was going to be cool. Um, yeah, I'm okay with that, though. Got to put a hold on your fanfics. Oh well, it's not fanfiction. Right. I know. It's canon. <laughs> canon. <laughs> Well, they they, they bridge they bridge the gap between the shows, the cartoons, and the movies with uh, with Saul Guerrero in Rogue One, mm-hmm. and I thought maybe they were going to continue doing that because Saul Guerrero, um, he he was in the Clone Wars, uh, and uh, he, but it was more of a happenstance. They they were looking for a character like this, like the kind of character that was Saul Guerrero in Rogue One, and uh, the the creative minds over at Lucasfilm said, you know, we actually have a character like this in canon already. Um, that you could use in in the movie, so it was a, it was a great nod. There you go. Uh, but it actually wasn't the original plan. That's why if you I don't know if you remember or not original trailers for Rogue One, that character was bald, and then all of a sudden he had that crazy hair. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You remember that, right? So that's why, and it, which is kind of funny because Saul Guerrero is again in Rebels and he's bald. Hmm. So it was one of those things where they they didn't update it in the in the cartoon. Um. 
but so I I was hoping they would there would be some more connections like that. That would have been fun. Um, but no, not uh, not to happen. I guess, but that's all right. So I'll go in there with an open mind, anyways. Though and Benicio de Toro is an awesome actor, and looking forward to seeing what he does. Good stuff. Good stuff. All um, right. The biggest stuff though. The biggest stuff is what came out of Mark Hamill's mouth. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so why don't you read that so then it doesn't get... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, need, this... I need new glasses here, people. That's the biggest issue. No, I, dude, hey, if you if you got a bad prescription or, you know, you have issues yeah. focusing with that, hey, I, I, I get it. I've, I've had bad scri- prescription written for me before, and it sucked. So, so you know, yeah, if you could please read me this bedtime story, Ian. <laughs> well, let me tuck you in first. All right, you nice and comfortable? All right, here we go. Yeah. This was through uh, Entertainment Weekly. Also, uh, Mark Hamill elaborated a bit more on uh, his motivations for Luke Skywalker, and he was quoted as saying, uh, Luke made a huge mistake in thinking that his nephew was the chosen one, so he invested everything he had in Kylo, much like Obi-Wan did with my character. And he's betrayed with tragic consequences. Luke feels responsible for that. That's the primary obstacle he has to rejoining the world and his place in the Jedi hierarchy. It's that guilt, that feeling that it's his fault that he didn't detect the darkness in him until it was too late. Yeah, that yeah. is pretty damn huge. Yeah, yeah. That I, is, uh, we might have we might have said spoilers first. Maybe I mean we probably should have said spoilers. My first. my 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 dad, you know, my dad is a is a huge Star Wars fan. It's funny hearing this. This is one of the first things along these lines that he said. At least that very part, he said, "I bet, I bet Luke took that whole betrayal defection so hard that it's his fault that he didn't catch this. That that well, he that, yeah that he wasn't on top of that." It's, I I agree. I agree, but to, to that motivation behind it to think that Kylo Ren or Ben Solo at that point uh, was the chosen one—that's huge. That's yeah. and that's new. It is. It and is that's a confirmation uh, of of a part of the plot. Um, I, I mean, a lot of that makes sense, and they've been talking a lot uh, ever since uh, Episode Eight's been in production about uh, the chosen one being uh, showing up again. A lot of people have been saying that it was going to be Ray, right? Um, and, and it might still be. Uh, but, um, yeah. Del- wow. Delve into this with me just a second. The Chosen One, in regard to the Force, how many, how many times does this crop up and why? Why, why is this a central figure that, that we see so much? The, the okay, whole mythology so behind it. There is a, there is a, a whole fake mythology about it, uh, with the midichlorines and all that stuff. Uh, we won't get into those too much because that upsets a lot of fans. But, um... So this really came up with the prequels, um, but it stems into the original trilogy, uh, which is that uh, Anakin was this prophesied chosen one. Right. Um, and so, the, you know, and they even say at the end of episode three or in episode three that maybe they were wrong. Uh, and then uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi thought that Luke was actually the chosen one, um, which is why he spends the time that he does with them. Uh, and now you here you have Luke thinking that uh, that Kylo that Ben was uh, was the chosen one. Right. So the the importance to this is that the chosen one is supposed to bring balance to the Force, uh, Got and it. put to alignment. It, which in the prequels uh, the, the Force is way out of balance. Uh, the light side has is dominant right. as far as uh, its outward control and. Um, known control in the universe, the the Sith are practically gone, and a lot of that's because of their stupid rule of two. Um, but they're lurking in the shadows, and, and the the Jedi are uh, very egotistical, and they right. become very lazy as far as um, being able to find the Sith. In fact, they think the Sith are gone. I'll come to find out. So, so a lot of people think that Anakin was the chosen one. He did bring balance to the Force. Mm-hmm. But by doing so, as Obi Wan says at the end, he, he took it into darkness. Right, right. Uh, he he demolished it uh, in in doing so, um, and then obviously the dark side takes takes control after that. Um, yeah, it, you know, you, you can you can pick your theories, and then a lot of people do think that Luke was actually the chosen one. 
right? Some people think Leia's the chosen one. Hmm. Uh, what What's not argued is that the chosen one generally is within the Skywalker family. I see. Hmm. Cool. Which yeah. Is why a lot of people think that Ray is the chosen one. Fair enough. Fair enough. If, you know, if you continue, if but, you continue to develop that theme. But the prophecy doesn't say it's going to be a Skywalker. In fact, the Skywalker family begins with, uh, well, actually with Anakin's mom, but she, he was, he was conceived by the Force. If she didn't, you know, he, the whole Jesus thing with it. Right. Um, but a lot of people think that's from Darth, uh, Darth Plagueis, or maybe Darth Sidious had a, had a hand in that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not real clear. Uh, there, there's probably some canon in books that elaborate a little bit more, but in the movies they're not clear about it. Uh, but generally, the it, it is accepted that Darth Plagueis actually um, used... Uh, the dark side and uh, dark alchemy to create the midichlorians to conceive Anakin within, within his mom. Interesting. Um, Right. Right. So, and that he's actually a creation of Darth Plagueis. Um, something with the force did it. That's for sure. (laughs) Uh, Because it's not, it's not disputed that he's, uh, that he's a creation of the force. That's not disputed. Um, but how it, how it came to be, we don't know for sure. Um, so, you know, a lot of people didn't want to see this whole Chosen One thing continue. I'm okay with it, depending on how they, how they do it. Uh, I, one of my theories is that, that Ray is the Chosen One, but is not a Skywalker. There's nothing to, that says that they have to, you know, the Chosen One has to be a Skywalker. Um, yeah, but it, it, it's interesting, though. And I would really like to know why Luke thought that, uh, that Kylo Ren was the Chosen One. And not Same. Himself, and not himself or his father. And why he would think that uh, Kylo Ren is. Ooh, spices it up for the end of this year. Yeah, it's good stuff. We'll see. We'll see. It's good stuff. But uh, yeah, but well, so there you go. I mean, you asked for an explanation to answer that for you. <laughs> yeah, more than more than. <laughs> okay. Good deal. All right, go cool. ahead. Fair well, what enough. Do you, what do you think? Do you do you think Kylo Ren is? Do you think or do you think Ray is the chosen? Oh, one? I don't. I don't have. I, I need. I need more backstory about Kylo Ren at this point to to make any kind of conclusion as to if I think he is, uh, or so. Or, or right. why? Well, or why I'll, Luke I'll would say here's here's what we know though, mm-hmm. um, because I don't get into the books or the comics a lot, as, and, and they are canon. But I did get. Jeez, uh, I don't even remember the name of it. Uh, Bloodlines. I did get Bloodlines. Uh, Bloodlines is a book that takes place five years before. The Force Awakens. And this is canon. It's mainly about Leia, but it's also about Leia dealing with the fact that Darth Vader was her father mm-hmm. and how that affects her life politically when it comes out uh, and such. Uh, it's a really good read. Um, but So it takes place five years before, and Luke is not in hiding yet. Hmm. So he still has his Jedi Temple that he's created. He still has his students. Kylo Ren has still been solo. Um, but those... What happens happens shortly after that book, so everything that happened in Force Awakens, you know, where you see this is all just years before. It's all fairly new stuff. Um, so, you know, what we know though is that uh, something pisses off Kylo Ren. Now, from what we learned from the movie, is that Snoke is constantly trying to turn him to the dark side, right? Whether, whether he knows it's Snoke or not, but something's pulling him to the dark side. Um, whatever's happened, Luke has found out something that makes him even question being a Jedi. He openly says in that trailer that the Jedi have to end, and he goes to the first Jedi Temple, which is where he's at, to try to get answers. Um, and for some, something happens, and Kylo Ren, Ben Solo gets pissed off, joins uh, the Knights of Ren, becomes Kylo Ren, and destroys the Jedi Temple. Right. And that... You know, that makes Luke go into hiding. Now, this whole thing surrounding the Chosen One makes a lot of sense as far as that goes. It also adds into the fact that Kylo Ren is obviously trying to follow, and he openly says it, he's following in his grandfather's footsteps. Yep. Who was also said to be the Chosen One. Right. So there there was a lot of story about the Chosen One being reincarnated in this movie, and maybe it is, but maybe it's not Ray. I, uh, the reason why I don't, um, I'll say this right now. I I don't buy into, into the whole the chosen theories about Kylo Ren off the bat because I think what we're building here with this run of Star Wars uh, is strong enough on its own without that. Uh, I'm very interested in Ben slash Kylo Ren as a, as a character already. 
Uh, I know obviously we'll, we'll be seeing him again, and I don't feel I, uh, he needs that part of an air to, to support him or somehow to connect. That's his purpose. Uh, you know, I, 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 I think he has a little bit more beside beside that. Well, uh, and a lot of people think that Kylo Ren, by the end of this trilogy, is going to end up being redeemed and, mm-hmm. and end up being a good guy. I don't think that can happen. No, I, you, I, don't, I, you don't kill Han Solo and come back from that. No, <laughs> this is this is very much a a post era for a lot of things. This is how you know this this new Star Wars kick has built itself. You know, I, this is even coming to the first opening shots of the movie. I'm never going to forget that imagery, uh, Tatooine and the the wreckage of Star Destroyers. You know, that's, it, uh, that, that's Jeff who that's not Tatooine. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> that's all right. She was uh wait. The moon, she the moon, uh, the moon she was on. Yeah, no, that was Jakku. That's not. That's not. Okay, Kylo. okay, I do. Uh, okay, 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 okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. My bad. That's all right. That's all right. You're not as huge as a fan. That's I'm okay. Not. A lot of a lot of people thought that. But that that whole imagery, uh, that really tells really what what the series is so about, and I love that. I, this is right. So much coming out of the, of the ashes of what we have before the ashes of the Empire, the ashes of the the Jedi Order and whatnot. And I don't. I just. You know, I think the same old tropes don't necessarily have to be there to support a good story. So, I dig. So, a couple, a couple things to add in all that though. So, Ray was hidden on Jakku. Mm-hmm. You get it? Don't forget that. Um, and she is insanely powerful in the Force with yeah, she no is. strength. And so, what's the deal with that? Exactly. I think, I think this is a. I think this is a great puzzle piece added into the whole thing. Um, we're supposed to find most of this out with the last Jedi. Very interesting stuff, though. It's just it, it, it's pretty cool, you know. It, the the only other thing I guess I would have to add to this is that Mark Hamill was noted as saying some months ago that he was not happy with what this movie does with his character. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah, and, and as someone who who is known and is not not even it's not even disputed, he is the most powerful force welder that the universe has ever had, I would think he might know if his nephew was the chosen one or not. You'd think. If not himself. I mean, at this point, who else is going to have that kind of foresight? This this was a guy trained by Yoda, uh, right. trained by Obi-Wan, has had so much investment in him, so if any... If anybody's got the foresight to look, uh, yeah, what what would you know? What were the factors that led him to that? Right, and well, in in Luke himself, very much feels like a balance of the force. He's not quite light. He's not quite dark. He's generally a Jedi, but he he does use some some Sith powers, like at the beginning of Return of the Jedi, where he does the the force choke on the pig guys. Yeah, and and stuff like that. He he does he does seem like he walks walks the line here. Um, I don't know. Very, very interesting stuff. This is this is pretty cool. Um, I'm glad to have some kind of idea of the direction this is going in. Um, see, now this is I can I could talk about this stuff forever. <laughs> and I, and we're going to go way, way over. If I right. don't cut that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. We we uh, last week's episode wasn't the best. So so, but that's not our fault. That's just news's fault. We didn't have much to comment on. No, except for Shazam and Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> and Transformers <laughs> with John Cena. Oh man, Com- com- Cena. coming right off that amazing last night. Mm. I I stand by that. By the way, if Bumblebee is not a Volkswagen Bug in that 1987 prequel Bumblebee spinoff, it's shit. It's just shit. <laughs> it, he's, it just is. If he's if he's not a bug, it's garbage. <laughs> I don't know. John Cena can save it. We both know that. John Cena could pick him up if he's a bug. Yeah. <laughs> he can, he'd suplex him. <laughs> oh, he, man. He can give him the John Cena finisher, whatever that's called. I, I actually have no idea what his finisher is. Or not. It, it used to be the STFU, but <laughs> then WWE actually caught on to what that meant, and they said, you have to change the name. <laughs> you got away with it for years. <laughs> Well, which was great because it was a it was a submission move too. See, it, it's funny, you know. You, you're in an environment where all these acronyms are flying around. You know, Brock Lesnar's got his F5. Uh, sounds like something you'd want to enter on a keyboard. Uh, you know, and all. Well, well, that's because it's uh, like a hurricane. 
a tornado. Oh no, I I I thought it was an earthquake, man. I I just I really didn't know. You know, oh, that's all right. I I have no problem. I I was an avid watcher of the Monday Night Wars. I don't. I I will catch wrestling every once in a while now. Maybe every once every couple months I'll watch like an hour or so. But no, I no, watched, I, I watched it uh, religiously for years. No, no, I I was actually being completely sarcastic there. No. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> well, I, I you, you you're not a wrestling fan. I was. Oh, were you? For years, man. That, that, that's why I was just joking about the, the F5 thing. thing. No, like, I, I, I get I get the reference that they were going with it, but I, it just always kind of made me smile. I watched wrestling the most during the, um, I started during the early 90s uh, era. Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, Gang Grail, Edge, uh, Nation of Domination, and all that. You know, before that broke up and later created, you know, the Acolytes, and then we had, you know, the Hardy Boys take off and all that. That was... Oh yeah, so you were you were a Monday Night Wars fan too. Yeah, man, that was the time. I think you were a WWF fan though. What about uh, what about WCW? Where's your love for the NWO? The Sting? I was all I was hey I was I was all about some Sting. Uh, Sting. But Sting was good, but when you reference WCW, how do you not say Ric Flair? <laughs> Woo! That's I, right. I, except when he did that and then got hit by a chair. That was really funny. But <laughs> that oh man, I you know. Most of my time was spent, seriously though, most of my time was spent in WWF. Uh, WCW was in that mix for me, and I, I, but I had a much more accurate beat on the, the dramas that were going on in WWF and WCW. I, I'd watch, you know, I'd watch the matches and I knew, you know, who was who, but uh, not to the level I knew WWF, so. You know, in, in the shows that they had back then, 15, 16 years ago, are just so much better than the crap that's on now. They are, they, or they were rather, but man, <laughs> this competition creates creativity. True, true. There's really a better way to say that than saying create twice in a row, but that's all right. Create, 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 create. No. Derp, derp, derp. Speaking of creating, let's talk about video games. Yeah, spinning over to the gaming side. There's a couple of pe- cool pieces of news here. Uh, um, uh, the first one concerns Overwatch and Destiny Two, which is over. Uh, Destiny Two is on its way next month, September sixth. Is it next month already? Uh, yeah, oh, we're getting there. Oh, they they do not waste time with Destiny. It's we're getting there, man. It's nuts. You well, know, it's uh, done. If it's if it's a month away, less than a month away, it's done. Yeah, I think that thing's getting the copies are being made. It's getting ready to go. Yeah, you know, when uh, Destiny, when I think about this game overall, you know, I and, and I think the studios are saying this too. It had a, a bit of an underwhelming release. You know the. Part of that can be said that how high this was hyped and built before it came out. Okay, bear in mind this was the Halo killer. You know, this was the the new. Was this the Halo killer? Yeah, supposedly. I sworn Halo was the Halo killer. Yeah. <laughs> There's a very strong argument to be made for that. I really agree. But... No, no, I no. We'll go. We'll go back four years. This this was a this was a current gen launch title. But was it exclusively PlayStation? It was for a while. I don't think it is now, is it? But no, it's it, it's not now. No, it's it's on uh, multi platform. But it came out for PlayStation first, right? It, yeah, if you go back far enough, because I I think about Killzone. That was another one way oh. back when. They were talking. Ah, oh, you know, here's the comparison. That was the, That was another one that shot itself in the head. Sure was. Sure it was. was. Fun. It was fun. Fun, fun, right? But you know, not to that level and scale. So. I think for the scope Destiny wanted to, I think they fell a little short of that, and I, I really don't think that they've given up on trying to pursue that, because they got the makings of a formula there, especially combining right. the RPG, you know, MO-esque elements, you know, with the shooter. Uh, uh, the soup, it's there. Uh, the, the broth is made. Correctly, what, what ended, in Destiny, unlike most MMOs and action MMOs or whatever, it's basically, it's an RPG. What, what ends up with most of these Pay to play or uh, or or free ones like this, where you you know pay for other stuff. Uh, what ends up getting them is lack of content, not enough content. And I yeah. believe, if I if I remember correctly, that was Destiny's ultimate issue. Yeah, you know, people, a lot of people in Destiny you know, complained how fast they got to end game, um, as far as what there was to to do uh, going forward. You know, one of the most interesting things about playing, I think, uh, an MMO especially. But an RPG is, you know, what you unlock towards those final quests. What are the big ultimate weapons? What are the world bosses? What are the, uh, the, the, the epic crafting recipes or, you know, ultimate skills that take so much time to combine? Uh, that, that's the crazy stuff. And that gets a lot of fun. And with MMOs allow you to keep building on top of that. With Destiny, you just, like, you had a game and you got the, and it just sort of peaked out. 
like a console game. Yeah, like uh, I mean, I <laughs> <It's a> console <laughs> game. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I uh, I played Destiny uh, quite a bit when that was released, but I just I just wasn't taken in by it. Um, um, and it's interesting that this is piece of news that came out here that about a game so focused on multiplayer has <laughs> is still developing in some multiplayer and multiplayer modes. Uh, so th- th- this is kind of a two piece uh, piece of news, and I'll focus on the Destiny side of it first because we're right there. Um, the there's a new multiplayer mode coming out in, in, in uh, for Destiny 2. They posted a trailer for, uh, and in the same hand, uh, Overwatch posted a, 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 a deathmatch trailer. And, but both of them, the concurrent line that runs between that is you have this this versus gameplay instead of the larger world making a team exploring an area. Now it's, it's straight up head up versus, and it, it, that kind of brings a smirk to my face. I said, you know, uh, that's the primordial super shooter games. You know, I mean, let's go back to Unreal and Quake and all that, man. You know, player versus player. Uh, that's that, that's that's what the arena of this stuff's at. And yet, you have titles that have tried to get outside of that with shooters, and now they're kind of coming back inward to include that. It's almost like ah, well, that's like the tried and true. So at least have some element for this. Uh, this really blew me away for Overwatch too, and I actually didn't expect a mode like this. You know, Overwatch has been billed as the team shooter. Uh, it's super popular. There's tournaments for it everywhere. Uh, very much alive, at least just when I saw this year going to uh, PAX Southwest, watching the Twitch stream tournament for it. Uh, full turnout. You have Overwatch. You play Overwatch. Uh, I do, occasionally. Uh, I, I have played it. Um, yeah. I don't play it regularly. Yeah, you know, and I mean, for what it is, it, it's cool. You know, it, it's very sandbox-esque. You know, you got a lot of pre-built elements. You come in. You take your team like a toolkit, and you know uh, how you can creatively apply that. Go for it. Um, but with them directly coming out with a deathmatch mode uh, for this, is uh, as well as um, Destiny, really made me think of ah, you know where are they heading with it. Uh, there was a develop uh, interview with the developer on Overwatch. In fact, uh, Jeff Ka- uh, Kaplan uh, he was explaining that uh, they didn't think initially that deathmatch was right for the game because the studio wanted to focus on objective based team modes like quick play stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, the arcade, uh, hey, and everything they've done, they've now opened up their abilities developers to introduce game modes, uh, that they normally wouldn't feel right doing it. And this goes along with the story of Overwatch, with the story of, uh, Destiny as well. They're constantly developing games, you know, Overwatch was supposed to be way smaller than what it, it turned into. Blizzard wasn't expecting that. It just blew up and became huge, so they were kind of... <laughs> bound to expand it at that point. Uh, yeah. It was it was really just sort of meant to be a canned title, and that's it. But people went crazy about it and loved it. So on the one side, you have Blizzard, who sort of had an unexpected success, and Destiny, which has so much behind it, they want it to be that huge success, and they haven't found it yet. Uh, regardless of where they're sitting, both of them are trying to bring these new multiplayer elements in into games that are already multiplayer games. Kind of neat. Well, so I mean, I've got two comments on this. Um, Destiny uh, opening up a PvP mode for their MMO, which is essentially what it is, mm-hmm. um, that's not new. Uh, I'm a little surprised they hadn't done that. Yeah. Um, Overwatch not having a, a simple deathmatch, that's kind of stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised. that I mean, most people don't even do simple deathmatches anymore. It's, it's, it's kind of surprised. It's like, you know, it, it's like going over to Baskin Robbins and like, well, you you don't have vanilla, <laughs> you know. Vanilla. Yeah, and if if you think about it, I think the only other game um, that I can think of that really managed to pull that off well without having the whole constant, constant direct PvP was uh, Team Fortress Two. Uh, which, and, you know, I'd argue I think that's why Overwatch, it, to me at least, felt like that's why it took off so much. A lot of the TF2 community moved there. There was already a lot of those same grounds in place for the team versus team style gameplay and like you know uh team objectives right. though, though that did err more towards the side of you know straight out kills and pvp still i digress yeah. well so overwatch um hey keeping it going why not um yeah great rock that, Des- destiny 2 eh, yeah <laughs> let, let, let's face it you know I, hey uh with me at least destiny 2 is out of my mind i'm looking to anthem 
Yeah, I'm looking at yeah, same here. Looking at Anthem, but I guess for in in you, you're going to contradict me on this, which is fine. Um, <laughs> we we feel differently about this. Uh, I don't think MMOs really have a place on consoles. Uh, we do feel differently about that, which is fine. Uh, I I can geek disagree to we can agree to disagree agreeably all day. Um, it it really depends on the model. I've I've always felt uh, with how they're married, uh, with how they if if they do involve the PC elements at all. My only case, I don't have to make a ten minute argument out of it. I look at FF fourteen. Yeah, but you play that on PC, don't you? I started on console. Okay. Now I do. I recently made my move to PC, but I play with the gamepad on PC. What do you mean gamepad? I use an Xbox controller. I play it. Oh, okay. All right. So why did you say you use a controller? No, no, I got to be trendy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no. It's like, what's it's this gamepad? You know what? Because when I think gamepad, I think about the mouse pad my mouse is on when I play on the computer. <laughs> so I'm old like that. No, no, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. No, I, I just... Yeah, Destiny, whatever. They they tried. I, I When Destiny was first coming out a few years ago, I, I was looking at getting uh, the, the current-gen console that I hadn't yet. I knew I was going to get one for Mortal Kombat. Um, so I was like, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe Destiny. But I was still very anti-MMO after having spent uh, so much of my time in, in WoW. So The, the, um, the, the console-only structure is difficult. And we've seen a lot of games fall on their face with this. Um, it's kind of funny, you know, Final Fantasy XII, if you look at it, has the skeleton of an MMO. Basically, you know, from what I've played, that game feels like a single-player MMO. And it, it it really feels it had the framework to launch into that, but just didn't scale back to a single player game. Now, in some ways, I can't be helped. The game right before it, FF eleven, was an MMO. So, yeah, do what you will. Cool. The other piece of gaming news, definitely hitting this real quick because it hit all the right childhood fields for me. Ding 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 fields. ding. That's <laughs> you, just you, me trying to make the the noise. I was about to say you even got the ring sound. Thank you. Uh, that's that's Sonic. Mm-hmm. Mania that is coming out this coming week, August 15th. Cannot wait. Uh, I was hyped the moment I saw this trailer way back. Uh, it is. It has a, t- it has a team alongside it who supported Sonic runs for years, all the way back to the original console. Also, one of the, some of the original uh, creators from the Archie comic series. Uh, one of the longest running game to comic uh, adaptations out there was uh, involved in this too, I think in the key animation as well. Uh, I was showing that to you a bit before show chris uh they recently showed footage of that intro yeah i uh, watched that i didn't know what i was watching yeah I watched it. <laughs> this is uh this is a serious throwback so the early 90s when sonic cd came out um this sonic was Sonic cd the yeah. only thing good that came out of sega cd yeah <laughs> that 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 uh, hold on a minute that and final fight because the Sega CD port of Final Fight was one of the most accurate translations. The other one for Super Nintendo is that that sucked. Uh, Final Fight CD managed to carry off the arcade port fairly well. Fairly well. I was too busy playing Mortal Kombat to give a crap about Final Fight. All right, word, word. You you take that hall pass all day. I can agree with that. Fair enough. But uh, here we got it. Sonic Mania. This is very much panning itself uh, as one of uh, right on the lines of gameplay as the old school games. Uh, 2D style, really borrowing heavily from Sonic CD, even in form and animation. The opening uh, sequence, at least to this, uh, just took me all the way back. You know, it was it was pretty mind blowing at the time to have an, an anime esque intro to a game. It was like, wait, what are we playing? What am I doing? You know, and, and that that scene still stands out, not just in the Sonic community, but uh, just during the Sega era. You just you didn't see that. Uh, n- not even in a lot of the more developed, you know, 16-bit titles that we have, and uh, very fluid, very awesome. The gameplay has looked super sharp for the longest. I'm I'm a big fan of the old Sonic games. I never got into the modern ones as much, uh, but I'm I'm picking this up quick. In fact, I'm surprised I haven't pre-ordered it. But well, you know, okay, so I'm gonna say what I said before the show when you had me watch this. Um, I legitimately didn't know what I'd just seen. <laughs> uh, I could have been an intro to a, to a cartoon or a game I, I did not know. Uh, I Of course, I know what Sonic is, but um, he tails, um, you know, hey, it happens. Some people are born with deformities, and that's fine. <laughs> um, Knuckles needs to go to the doctor. <laughs> that, 
that guy with with his with his floppy joints <laughs> in his in his hands and his ridiculously swollen palms. <laughs> he needs to go see a doc- doctor. I didn't know that he was that that's that's his thing. Is that uh, I don't have insurance. Yeah, man, he 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 could he could stick to walls, like that, and like scale walls and then glide. I'm sure. I'm a little surprised he doesn't have cracks in there with pus coming out. <laughs> That's disgusting. Well, don't don't take the glove off then. Oh, don't I, I glove or do you mean glove or do you mean bandage? <laughs> Suppose it could be right as a bandage. To see, so okay, so is this going this game? Is this what kind of game is? This? Is this like the classic ones where it's going to be super fast and you're collecting rings and you're jumping over stuff and doing loops and? Yep, classic style, two D. So what does Knuckles do? What he can run, he runs, he he runs, he glides, he can stick to walls and scale them. Like Sonic can't glide, Sonic can't stick to walls. Okay, so and then Tails obviously can fly. Yep. Also, I don't know if they're going to give Knuckles these abilities at all, because they did in some of the late, like, Game Boy Advance games and stuff, you know, to, to make use of his uh, wall-busting abilities, but he always had an ability to a degree to break through structures Sonic and Knuckles, a uh, little Sonic and Tails might not be able to. Don't know if they're going to do that here, though. Knuckles so. needs to go run his ass over to Urgent Care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's girl. That's honestly what, I mean, it was good animation. Um, I mean, I knew who the characters were, although I didn't know Tails' name was Tails. That's, I guess I should have known that. Yeah. I, I asked you, what's this guy's name? What's the guy's name with the two tails? It's Tails. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like it so well. <laughs> Alright, that's Tails. Um, the only thing, I'm, I'm thinking that the whole time, like, what is this for? And then I'm thinking, why isn't Tails just totally like, trashing these guys in this race? Because he can fly to the end. <laughs> You don't even, I, th- I don't even think you see Knuckles again. You see him at the beginning. And then, am I wrong? No, no, you're not. Well, it, I, for, to me at least, I kind of played in the fact that Knuckles is an absolute klutz. He's kind of dense. Like, the, the, his whole thing he's introduced into the series is he's tricked in the very well, start. he's got an infection in his blood. Well, so, I, that, that contributes, I mean, right? I mean... <laughs> it's not helping. He's, he's always been kind of two steps behind one of the more, like, clueless characters, but... You know, he's got a dude's got a good heart. He's dedicated guardian, and hey, you know what? He becomes a pretty staunch ally later on. He just I'm gonna bet he's got a bad heart. Yeah, <laughs> you're sticking on this disease theme. It's gross. <laughs> it was seriously gross. Oh man, <laughs> it was seriously gross. Um, I uh, sure. It's not, what's this one called? Sonic Mania. Sonic Mania. All right, there it is. So are, I, are you gonna are you gonna get it oh yeah i'll talk about it next week all right all right maybe we'll get our first game review you heard it here and uh th- this this is going to be coming in the wake two of uh years back sega made an attempt sonic 4 and uh, there were things done right but it fell short it really did um really appreciated the effort especially going back to the the, the, the 2d style uh, this is this really picked up after Sonic CD, so it kind of followed sequentially in a way too, story wise. That was cool, um, but it still fell short. Uh, there were a few tweaky gameplay elements, uh, uh, some just linkage issues, etc. But you know, I'm I'm hoping they hoping they got all that fixed. We'll see. Is we'll that the one, or is that a different one where it's like one of the worst games ever, where it's it's kind of like an RPG and he's in a world with people, and it's just no, really that's a different one. Head. Different one, yes. Sonic Four was very much a uh, when in the vibe of spiritual successor. It was strictly two D gameplay. Oh, okay. So, well, well, all right. No, it's, I mean I've had my hands in some Sonic games. They always seem like fun, but uh, I am worried about Knuckles. So, <laughs> go play it. See, yeah. see what happens. I was I was legitimately a bit shaken when I saw his hands. <laughs> Because the, the the knuckles are flying. Here, here, here. I'll, 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 I'll help you out, man. D- don't don't apply too much realism to this. Is that it? Yeah, you, you'll hurt your head. You really will. Yeah. All right. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> How yeah, about? I think it's time. What, what's that? How about that info minute? Info minute. All right. <laughs> Let's do an info minute. 
Um, what, what's the Infowar Minute? Well, if you're going to be visiting the United Arab Emirates, or if you live there or whatever else, uh, you might want to take some soy sauce with you. Where is that, by the way? Uh, the UAE, uh, short, it's actually a chain of uh, uh, chain of nation states over on the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, this is uh, like Qatar, uh, Bahrain. Uh, it's over on the Arabian Gulf. Okay. Um, they Middle, ha- Middle East period people, Middle East. Yeah, the UAE has uh, banned Kikoman soy sauce. Uh, the results of, or as to why they banned it, they said it possesses alcohol content. Um, now, th- this struck me as kind of odd slash interesting in a few ways. First of all, Kikoman soy sauce, that's like the first soy sauce I see everywhere. Uh, in terms of how, you know, chefs use it if you're going to like a hibachi grill or like, you know, like a, a Japanese style restaurant, like whatever else. Um, but to just take a product outright, I mean, like, like ban it just because of like, you know, alcohol content. It's weird that that recently came out. You know, chefs were baffled and said, well, we had no idea it had alcohol content. Um, heck, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of hibachi grills and all that. And this is always one of the first things I see there. And it's usually sold like in huge bottles and everything else. But yeah, no, no one else has launched anything about getting rid of this. And it just, that sucks. I like my soy sauce. Can't you get soy sauce with your chicken McNuggets? Is that soy sauce, though? Is it? I, I don't know. I'm asking. I don't think I'm it trying, is, man. I'm trying to relate to this in some way. I don't, <laughs> I don't eat soy sauce. I never eat soy sauce. So it, that's more like that's more like 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 the honey barbecue, right? Where it's like, like actual soy that sauce. Is- like yeah, the consistency is like it's it's very it's uh, not as thick. It's okay. it's it's more it's more liquid light. All right. Soy but, sauce. You can't have it in the Middle East anymore. Just, just as long as you're in the UAE area, you know, that's all you got. United Arab Emirates, is that what you said? Yep. All right. That's that's a bad info minute this week. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a piece of info. I mean, it, well, that's true. It is. It is information, and it did take you actually about a minute for that one this time. So. It always takes. It always takes. It always takes me a minute. I. I. It always does. Now our after talk about it. Only, only actually a minute because I kept my mouth shut the whole time. Our after. Our after talk about it. That is what will take us into the three info, four info, five info minute. Soy sauce. What? But, what is some stuff that's on? So what? What do you put on? Uh, what do you put soy sauce on? Oh man, plenty. Uh, dumplings. Um, like if you have, like uh, chicken and vegetable dumplings. Um. It's used... Chicken. It goes on chicken, right? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, you'd use this in a lot of stir-fry recipes. You'd use this in, um, uh, heck, like, uh, mix that with, like, fried rice recipes uh, okay. uh, as a as a marinade base. Um, you know, uh, you could do, uh, in fact, like, even to, like, barbecues, like, um, like Korean barbecue, uh, the type of sauce that you use, soy sauce can be a mix with, like, uh, soy sauce, sesame seeds, um, and then you thicken that up a little bit. Uh, with your own your own choices, spices and everything else, and roll that, and you got a recipe. It's right. a, it's in a ton. It's in a ton. I've had it. I've had it. Uh, yeah, all right. I'm okay with the one with the other. <laughs> but I never, I never, I never pegged you as much of a guy into into eating eating, eating Chinese. I always pegged you as more no, like a whopper no, guy. No. no, but I've had I have had it on chicken and some fried rice and stuff. It's I'm all right with this. If it's if it's gone, I probably would never notice. Well, you won't notice it here. Just stay, just stay in the U.S. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's all I got, and that's all we got. That is that is, and that's uh, we're gonna end. We are gonna end the show like that. So thank you ah. for tuning in. Be sure to uh, hey, drop us a comment. Of course, uh, you can give us an email. It's caseallmedia at gmail dot com, or just be sure to leave a comment. Uh, you can tune in next time for next week, Sonic Mania. Like some more Netflix or whatever else cool that we find to come up. Defenders. And the Defenders. That will be the big ones. Big stuff we'll be talking about. So, Defenders of the Universe. I thought that was no, a job for the Guardians of the Galaxy. That's a different one. That's no. a different, one. different, different. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, that, that was, but that was a comic book team, too. It was. Yeah, that was, um, who was that? Uh, uh, some magician. And uh, who was the, who was the guy in the purple suit who who shot people? 
Um, That's pretty was, broad, man. He was, he was in the job. <laughs> he was in the jungle. Um, it was some ghost. Oh gosh, that guy. He was a defender of the universe. Research material next week. <laughs> yeah. Up there with up there with soy sauce. He had he had a really crappy movie. Billy Zane played him. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about now? I know I know Billy Zane. I, I can I can I think I'm seeing an image of this guy in my head, but I can't. I could not tell you the name. I can't remember his name, but his slogan was "The Ghost Who Walks." Yeah. You know. I'm gonna find. Why wasn't this guy as iconic as Swamp Thing? I don't know. The Phantom. Phantom. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. All right, there we go. That and soy sauce. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a good week. Uh, Have a good weekend, at least the rest of it that remains, if you're listening now. And you take it easy. See you next time. See you later.